On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace a clutch master cylinder on an S14, Nissan 240SX, or S13. So let's get started. Nick Nakai here, well, that's Drift Media. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. So before we get started, I just want to say uh, sorry that I've been missing a bunch of uploads. I've been super busy, a lot of shit's been going down at work. If you guys follow my Instagram story, you guys would know what's up. But um, also too, just went to Mammoth last weekend, had a really sick time out there. It was really dope. Trying to get back on the weekly uploads. Uh, I've been trying to think about what kind of content to put out and I need to put a lot of work on this S14 because I haven't been drifting in a good minute and I really miss it. So that's what we're gonna do in today's episode. Start with this clutch master cylinder. I've been having this clutch problem. So let me see if I can try and show you guys what exactly I'm talking about. I'm just sitting here lonely. Literally have not driven this in like four or five months, six months maybe since the last drift event. But uh, yeah, still starts up, perfect. Alright, so turning on the car was kind of pointless, um, basically the clutch just feels like the best way I can describe it is just like really mushy, kind of shitty, like, it feels like I'm not pushing the clutch until I'm like already like halfway down the travel of the clutch pedal, and it's really annoying because like you'll put it in first gear and like, it feels honestly like you're not even pushing the clutch, like, there's not that much pressure until you're like, like I said, halfway down. And a lot of the times too, this could be caused just by air pockets in your clutch system, but I've bled the air out of the system and it's still not feeling like up to spec how I want it to feel. And also too, I have already replaced the slave cylinder. So that might be another thing you might want to look at when you're having clutch issues and stuff like that. But it really just comes down to the slave cylinder and the master cylinder. So when I did have a bad slave cylinder, what was happening was I was pushing the clutch all the way down and the clutch pedal wasn't coming back up. So even like I said, after bleeding it, it still wasn't coming up. So I replaced the slave cylinder, that went fine. But then the last track event I was at, I remember like like once the car got hot like I would hit the clutch and like the clutch wasn't doing anything like it almost it just felt like the clutch had like no pressure like there was no fluid in the system or anything and there's the fluids topped off and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and attack this clutch master and see hopefully it fixes the problem pretty sure it will to get started upon removal really freaking simple down under the hood on the clutch slave cylinder there's gonna be two 12 millimeter nuts holding the slave in to the clutch pedal, and then just your clutch line. I do have an aftermarket steel braided line. So that one's I believe like a 12 millimeter, but if you have the stock one, it's probably a 10 millimeter, and I recommend using a line wrench because those lines are like brake lines and they strip very easily. So underneath the dashboard right now, this is the clutch pedal. Uh, usually there's a push pin or something right here. I just have a 12 millimeter bolt holding it through because I just built this shit in my driveway, but you should take that off. And then once you take those ones on the outside out, the slave should just pop right out. Also too, you can see the, the adjustment rod. That was my first go-to. I was like, oh, maybe the clutch push rod isn't extended enough. And that's why it's not building pressure until like all the way down. But you can see that push rod is like almost maxed out. So definitely something's up with that. So now you guys kind of have a rundown of how the Clutch Master is installed. Uh, it's super simple, like anybody can do this. All right, so I already got the fork on the pedal unbolted. And I'm just gonna get those two 12s, one on each side of the slave cylinder and weasel it out. And before you take the two 12s off, just go ahead and crack the line going to the Clutch Master from the slave cylinder. That'll just save you some trouble. Got both 12 millimeters off. I uh, had to use this big gear wrench. Probably be a lot more easy if I like quarter inch and stuff, but I don't have those at home. So once you get that off, should just slide right out. Voila. Just keep in mind, 
where the push rod is set. As you can see, this new one is like way in, but you're gonna have to do some adjusting later on anyways. So just keep that in mind though, where the old one comes off. So anytime you're installing a master cylinder, brake master, or clutch master, you need to bench blade it before you install it. So what that means is you're gonna wanna fill the reservoir with fluid. Let's see if I get a little closer. You're gonna wanna fill the reservoir with fluid. You're gonna push the push rod through and then you're gonna cover the opening port with your finger and let it suck in fluid. That way it's sucking in fluid from the reservoir. If you don't do this, you're gonna have air pockets in the master cylinder and it's just a bitch to bleed, so. So I couldn't really show you guys cause I'm here by myself, but it's the first time you push it out, you're gonna see a bunch of air and it's just gonna be like <laughs> So you just wanna do that, hold it like I said, let it suck it in, do it like once or twice and you're gonna see, once you have a solid stream of liquid flowing out of the port, then you know you're good. And if you have this original plug that the new master comes with, put it on because that way it'll just hold the fluid in. If not, it's just gonna keep leaking the fluid out of the master and by the time you have it installed, you're gonna have to bench plate it again. So now we're good. Let's uh, go ahead and reinstall this bad boy. So once you got the master cylinder installed, all you need to do is now bleed the clutch. So if you're with somebody, you can just have them pump the clutch pedal three times, one, two, three, hold, and have someone go underneath, put a hose on the slave cylinder, crack it open, and you'll see air bubbles pop out, and then after that, tighten it, and then just keep doing it until solid fluid comes out. But if you are by yourself, like me here at home, all you need is a vacuum hose and a water bottle. So what you're gonna wanna do is drill a hole in the bottle of the water bottle like this. So you can shove the vacuum hose in there, cut a slit in the top of the water bottle, fill up the brake, or fill up the water bottle, maybe like halfway with brake fluid. And then you're gonna wanna keep it upside down, plug this into the slave cylinder, crack open the slave cylinder, and then all you need to do is keep pumping the clutch pedal until solid fluid comes out but it's probably just gonna take like maybe five to 10 tries, five to 10 pumps, and then solid fluid will come out. So I'm gonna set a camera up underneath the car so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So right now underneath the vehicle, as you guys can see right here, slave cylinder bleeder valve hooked up to the hose to our homemade tool. Keep the bottle upside down and make sure the fluid is above the inlet where the hose is. I'm gonna go ahead and go inside the car and start pumping the clutch pedal right now. Keep in mind too, make sure the master cylinder is topped off because you don't wanna bring in more air into the system <laughs> while you're bleeding it. So let me show you guys. So I hope you guys got the gist of that. As you can see now, the fluid level has increased in the bottle. And I believe we got most of the air out and this also worked as a clutch line brake fluid flush. So now what we're gonna do is close off the bleeder screw on the slave cylinder and remove our special tool. All right, so coming back underneath the car, you just want to adjust that push rod. Basically, you wanna have it so where you push the clutch and you feel like a little bit of free play, maybe like an inch, half inch, and as soon as you start pressing further, you feel some pressure. That's where you wanna have it because that's when you start disengaging the clutch. All right, so let's start it up and see how this clutch feels. Honestly guys, that feels so much better. 
before it just felt mushy and it didn't really retain that much uh, attention. So like when you would let go, it felt like it was sluggish to come back up. That feels really good. Put it through all gears. Stall test, stall test. So, hope you guys enjoyed this little how-to video. I'm glad my clutch feels a lot better now. Really excited now to hit the track, hopefully soon. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching once again. I really appreciate all the support you guys have shown, all the love, everything. Catch you guys next time. Peace!